The report stated that the bar exam, quote, likely serves as a barrier to the racial and ethnic diversity of attorneys in Delaware and recommended the creation of an alternative to the bar exam uh, based on clerkships and recommendations. Uh, Justin Montgomery, I, f I find that a remarkable recommendation. Um, I'm Hispanic. I took the bar. I'm confident you took the bar and passed it. You and I have both known many extraordinary lawyers who are African American and Hispanic, who've taken the bar, who practiced, who served exemplary careers. Why is it that, that well, let me ask you this. Do you believe that, that there's something about Hispanics and African Americans that, that prevents them from taking the bar exam and doing well on it? Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, that was a committee that was made up of a broad uh, cross-section of attorneys, uh, of judges, of uh, uh, okay, citizens. Justice, we have really limited time, so, so I would appreciate if you just answer the, the specific question. Can you repeat the specific question? Sure. Uh, do you believe there's something about Hispanics and African Americans that prevents them from taking the bar exam and doing well on it? Uh, no, I do not, Senator. And do you believe, as you look at... at our cadre of attorneys that what we really need is more people licensed to practice law who, who for whatever reason, can't pass the bar exam. Uh, Senator, the recommendation that you read is a recommendation to the Delaware Supreme Court. The Delaware Supreme Court has not acted on that recommendation do, at do, all. Do you agree with the recommendation, though? You were co-chair of the committee that made the recommendation. Is that right? I was a co-chair of the committee, but I did not vote on the recommendation. Do you agree with the recommendation? I, I think that our... Uh, our Supreme Court would need to study very closely that recommendation, uh, and it's not a recommendation that the Supreme Court itself has studied yet and not a recommendation that we so as accepted co yet. So as co-chair of the committee that made the recommendation, did, did you examine the recommendations that your committee was making before it made them? So this was not a situation where the Supreme Court or the co-chair was even directing the recommendation. We were truly soliciting information from others, and they made okay, the okay, recommendation. Okay. I'm, I'm going to tr try again, and I know in, in your role as a judge you ask questions and you, you expect counsel to answer them. So did you examine the recommendations of the committee you were co-chairing before the recommendations were made? I saw the recommendations. I did not make an edit to any recommendation. Okay. Uh, Ms. Chung, you've served as United States Attorney uh, in Pennsylvania. You're also on the Attorney General's Advisory Committee. Um, you have spoken publicly about the Attorney General's TEN initiative, Trafficking Ends Now. Do you think it's important to stop human trafficking? Senator, uh, as United States Attorney, we have dedicated many resources to prosecuting trafficking, human trafficking. Uh, let, me, let me ask you, it. to what extent do you think the Biden administration's refusal to enforce the law which has resulted in three and a half million people crossing illegally in the last year and a half, the highest rate of illegal immigration in 62 years. To what extent has that lawlessness from the department in which you work right now contributed to and fueled the human trafficking crisis we're seeing? Uh, well, Senator, when I take up as a prosecutor, now as United States Attorney, supervise human trafficking cases, they're very fact-specific as to each case. Would human and trafficking be less if the Biden administration enforced the law? Well, Senator, there is uh, trafficking across borders, but also within our borders, so I would have D to... Does catch and release contribute to human trafficking? Senator, I do not have enough research or study on that. You to don't know? know that to know the answer. You, to you have no, you've been the chief prosecutor for a significant portion of Pennsylvania and you don't know whether three and a half million people come in illegally because the Biden DOJ won't enforce the law. You don't know if that contributes to trafficking? Uh, Senator, again, when we address human trafficking, it is on a case-to-case -case basis. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Right now, fentanyl is the leading cause of death for Americans 18 to 45. It has exploded under Joe Biden's refusal to enforce our border. Has that policy contributed to the over 100,000 people who've died of fentanyl overdoses in the past year? 
Uh, Senator, again, when we prosecute our fentanyl cases. Okay, okay you're, de you're declining to answer. Let me ask one final question. Last week, the White House press secretary said in front of the National Press Corps that people aren't walking across the border. It's just not happening. Was that a true statement? Uh, Senator, I'm not familiar with that statement. But, but is it true that no one is walking across the border and crossing illegally? Is that an accurate statement? Senator, I do not have You don't know? Basis. How do you prosecute a human trafficking case if you don't know where the people are being trafficked, how they're being trafficked? Well, Senator, when we do prosecute those human trafficking cases, it is on a case-to-case -case basis. Uh, and in those instances, we do know where they're coming from. It is often interstate. Uh, the human trafficking statutes are uh, about forced labor, uh, and that can be from state to state. Uh, it can be across borders. Thank you.